the issue should not be government. It should not be unalloyed and unlimited idolatry of personal property, which is the path that the libertarian movement has gone down. Hi, I'm Tim Cavanaugh for Reason TV. We're here with David Brin, the author of the renowned science fiction books, The Postman, The Uplift series, and many others. David, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's great, Tim. I love Reason. You are uh, self-identified as a libertarian, or have been in the past. You're often like to tweak libertarians in your TED address a while back. You said that libertarians are right about something, but they follow Ayn Rand down the path of, as you said, Well, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of equal Rand and Rothbard, and I, th I, I personally think this is the wrong path for the movement. I happen to believe that the issue should not be government. It should not be unalloyed and unlimited idolatry of personal property, which is the path that the libertarian movement has gone down. The greatest creative force in the universe is fair but creative competition. It's what made us, and in nature it's not always fair, but in the balance of a decent ecosystem, it has a certain circle of life fairness to it. Libertarians need to be reminded that across 6,000 years, the greatest enemy of free enterprise, of market enterprise, uh, innovation, creative competition, have always been oligarchs. The pyramidal social structure with a few lords at the top dominating everyone else for their own self-interest, their own reproductive self-interest. It was in their interest to make sure that their position was inherited and their children did not have to compete, even if they were great competitors. Well, it, to uh, deal with it in a modern context, though, I mean, I, I want my kids to inherit as much as they possibly can, and uh, there, there's little danger that I'm going to be able to lock out everybody else from inheriting whatever royalty I have to pass on. So, it, or, you know, isn't the fight now really uh, this sort of urge toward mass equality and everybody, you know, with inheritance taxes and on up. You're doing your job. Your job is to be a libertarian and to fight for non-government solutions to problems and to fight for the market to limit the regulation to the minimum that it needs to be. The tragedy of libertarianism is that it's not playing that function in the modern political landscape because it keeps being marginalized by the lapel grabbers, the Rothbardists, the Rand, pardon me, the Eindra, never mind, I don't want to be insulting. The fact of the matter is that when you get 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, at an era when the right in the Republican Party has clearly gone stark gibbering insane, then something is wrong with your message. Here's the point about liberals. They don't want to equalize outcomes deep inside. They want to equalize the playing field, the starting blocks for all children at age 25 to have had enough protein, enough education, enough health, so that they can then joyfully enter the competitive capitalist marketplace. Adam Smith wanted that. He would have disagreed with some of the more socialist, lefty ways. That's our job as libertarians. Get into the mix, negotiate, fight for the most enterprise-oriented solutions. You're the author of The Transparent Society. That was one of the early works to say the age of privacy that we have known is sort of coming to an end. and that maybe the future of that won't be so bad. What do you think has happened since then? We've had the USA Patriot Act. Uh, we've had you know, controversies around what, are, what is private in your phone records. We have also, on the other side, seen WikiLeaks. The Transparent Society is one of the only public policy books from the 20th century that's not only still in print, but selling more every year. The publishers are deeply puzzled. It may in part be because of page 206. I got all these emails, P206 in which there's this twilight zone moment in which from 1997 I say, well, let's suppose someday terrorists ever bring down world, both World Trade Center towers. What will the Attorney General ask for? Because of the ratchet effect. When the public is fearful and the, our paid protector cast asks for more powers to see, there is a ratchet effect, and I'm sorry, libertarians, it is going to happen. Here's the key about 1984 and the telescreen. It's not that Big Brother can look at the people. It's that it's one way. 
If Big Brother has all the power, all the force, all the police, all the guns, but it's all both ways and the people can see everything that the party members are saying, that dictatorship is not going to last more than another generation. Looking up at the mighty from below. Who will watch the watchmen? Quis ipso custodia custodias. We must watch the watchmen. We should draft 10,000 average Americans every year into a pool. You refuse, you're out. Then you do security clearances on them. You get 1,000 left. Loyal security clearance, willing to keep their mouth shut. And you unleash them with a badge that lets them in any door. And I mean any door in the United States of America. That would include Area 51? Any door. They can walk in and there are penalties. They spend a month in jail if they, let, if they say anything about anything they've seen. And there's no exception to the month in jail. But if they see something heinous, the month in jail is worth it to them. Huh. Okay. Our great en en enlightenment institutions, democracy, markets, courts, and science, all flourish exactly to the degree that all the participants know what's going on. And they die to the degree that they are robbed of light. Duh! And now you see why I'm a libertarian. I want this to work. I want it to be competitive. In terms of both uh, genetic modification and in the Uplift books, you, is there any question of informed consent? If you went to the insects right now and said, we're going to make you more intelligent, they could make a pretty good case. Well, we have a form of intelligence that's not, uh, uh, you know, that's our own. And that is one of the best questions I've been asked in, in, in months, in, <laughs> in, in a year or so. The minute somebody tries to meddle in the genes of advanced creatures like chimps or dolphins. I mean, people read the uplift books and they, they see the after effects 200 years in the future. I should first explain that I'm not the first person to do that. Pierre Boulet, Planet of the Apes, Cordwainer Smith, H.G. Um, Wells, The Island of Dr. Moreau, but all of those... In which Dr. Moreau is obviously the hero. Well, uh, he's just not, a, not a pleasant guy. In all of those cases, they went for the simple morality tale that we create these creatures in order to enslave them. I decided that's been done. So in my Uplift universe, it's 200 years from now, we've done this with the best of intentions. We've uplifted dolphins, given them that last leg up so they can use machines, they can talk to us. And people look at that outcome and they, and then they say, oh, cool, great. But then they stop and they think, and they say, what is going to be involved in starting this program? And there's one answer, it starts with P, pain. And the pain that several generations of dolphins and chimps would have to go through in order for their descendants to be these members of a civilization that's wise and benefits from them and that gives them the chance to pilot starships. This is going to result in both the right, for fundamentalist reasons, and the left, for goody two-shoes empathy reasons, crushing any conceivable effort to engage in this uplift process. And the only way around it is where your question comes in, informed consent. Lewis Herman's work at the University of Hawaii with several captive dolphins, by far the best, report to me. The dolphins are eager, given a chance to go away, they come back, but they get frustrated. When they fail at a task, they can tell that they were too stupid for the task, and they throw a fit, and they sulk. In my opinion, that's implied consent. That's, they're saying, I can't understand what you humans are saying, and I know it's really interesting. I'd like to understand better, but you're absolutely right about your next question, Tim. Is that just me subjectively interpreting? Because I'd like to interpret it that way. Absolutely. I don't know. This is the kind of fascinating moral quandary we should have as we pick up God's tools 
and become co-creators. Well, David Brin, thanks a lot for joining us. It's great to be here, and as a heretical libertarian, I'm still one of you guys. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. For Reason TV, I'm Tim Cavanaugh.